Hello everyone and welcome back to Mouse Future, where you are the first to discover the most recent projects of the theme park industry. In just a few weeks, the executives in Glendale will proudly announce their plans to redesign the submarines into the rockin' subs to the underwater city after Nemo and friends swim off into the sunset. As described in this press release, guests will travel under the sea in musical submarines featuring peppy songs from the most recent teen performers as they travel to the underwater city. They will sing along with the captain who will pilot the submarine and now sing along with each song to entertain the guests. Before we go into the details, let's take a brief look at the history of this section of the park. In 1955, this small lagoon in the northeast corner featured the Phantom Boats motor boats with unique tail fans. However, they were a mechanical nightmare and disappeared faster than they arrived. In 1957, the View Liner miniature train traveled over the lagoon to Fantasyland and back. In 1959, the submarine voyage through liquid space opened to rave reviews. These submarines actually carried guests underwater to amazing places, including ancient ruins, mermaids, and a trip under the North Pole. On September 9, 1998, the submarines closed, partly due to lack of wheelchair accessibility and the fact that the submarines ran on diesel fuel. Several attempts to re-theme and reopen the submarines were made based on many of the company's movies. However, the company was more concerned with several other projects at once and the submarine project was always pushed back. Finally, on June 11, 2007, the Finding Nemo submarine voyage opened. The submarines, now traveling on an underwater electric track, take passengers through a coral reef to an underwater volcano, featuring the characters from the Finding Nemo movie. Passengers unable to negotiate the stairs now have an observation room to sit in. And most important of all, no matter what your friends tell you or how passionately they believe it, this ride was never, ever called 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now, back to the rockin' subs. So how did this all start? Oddly, from the trees around the Autopia ride. There is a small paragraph in the California State Park's annual report noting that during the one-year renovation and lagoon draining of Finding Nemo, the horticulture department noticed that several of the trees were dying. After so many years, the trees' roots had now dug into the submarine lagoon and caverns to get their water. Although the landscapers continued to pour water at the base of the trees, the trees still continued to deteriorate. The state park botanist was brought in and made the incredible discovery that these trees now lived off the superchlorinated water of the submarine lagoon and produced nearly five times the oxygen. The state concluded that these are 11 new species of trees that need to be protected, including their water source. This now answers that odd question the guests always have at the Autopia ride of why they hardly ever use the inside track on even the busiest days. Although cast members repeatedly say it simply isn't busy enough, the real truth is that the inside track is closest to the protected trees. But back in the offices in Glendale, chaos ensued. On one side, the money-hungry executives quickly realized they could turn this into a tax incentive utopia with pollution credits, urban greenbelt credits, and by making the submarines an historical landmark, tons of tax deductions. Sadly, down the hall on the other side of the same building, the designers of the next New Tomorrowland were ordered to shred all their ideas of spaceship and superhero rides that they would never be able to discuss with the public. Rumors are the confetti was poured all over the execs' offices since the land in the biggest need of redevelopment just got the shaft. Again. One new attraction still on the go-ahead involves the old Innoventions building. Remodeled in 1997, it looks strikingly like the spaceships from the 1996 movie Independence Day. This is no coincidence. As soon as that movie came out all those years ago, a proactive theme park company bought all the rights to open an ID4 ride as soon as the sequel came out, which sadly was shelved for nearly 20 years. Now with the success of Resurgence and the upcoming sequels in progress, this ride is back on the drawing boards to replace the Expo Center since the Star Wars craze is dying down. But once Innoventions closed three years ago, park management quickly discovered the guests greatly missed the dream home and products featured by their corporate sponsors. Since park opening, Tomorrowland always featured future home products like the Bathroom of Tomorrow, the Plastic House of the Future, and the popular Carousel of Progress. Tomorrowland currently had no future home exhibit, and the park designers were given the order to come up with a new one. 
but where to put the House of the Future and all those corporate sponsors? This was quickly answered the very next morning while one of the still saddened designers got in his car to go back to the office where just the previous night he was forced to shred 10 years of hard work. Just as he turned on the car, music blasted inside since his squirrely teenage daughter left her Jonas Brothers CD in the car and had the volume turned all the way up. While their song Year 3000 played, in all his frustrations from the previous day, he was ready to throw the CD out the window until it hit him. Boy Band, Tomorrowland, Year 3000, Everyone Lives Underwater, Submarines, Holy Cow. And that, dear viewers, is how new rides are born at Disneyland. Instead of traveling to the North Pole or a coral reef volcano, park guests will now travel to a still unnamed future city under the sea in musical submarines with narration provided by Tomorrowland rock star Thomasina and featuring peppy songs from the most recent teen bands. And they will be encouraged to sing along with the captain who will pilot the submarine and now sing along with the music to entertain the guests. The loading area will look much the same. Although the submarines will now be painted black and white to look like piano keys, humorously named after the eight musical notes. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti, and of course the flagship of them all, Do Nautilus. Be sure to wear your glow in the show ears. They will dance along to the newly installed lighting all through the inside of the submarines. The first song in the lagoon will always be Year 3000, explaining to the guests they are traveling to an underwater city of the future. The caverns will be redesigned to look like an underwater city, with projections inside featuring the latest teen heartthrobs playing their latest hits. Scattered in between the bands you'll see the city of the future with the latest technology to buy in the nearby walkthrough. You might even see park guests in these areas as well, checking out the latest appliances in the underwater house. One new section will even have the submarines going through a real aquarium with real live fish and kelp. More on that later. The songs and bands will constantly change with the times, always drawing in new crowds. This ride will never lose its popularity. The first and last songs will always be the same. Year 3000 will be first, and at the end, in homage to the former Finding Nemo attraction, the submarines will continue to travel through the whale's mouth and the captain will get all the guests to sing along to Belly of the Whale as they return to the dock. This also keeps the tradition of being the only theme park in the world where there are not one or two, but actually three rides where park goers can be swallowed by a whale. Rumors of Captain Nemo playing his organ in one scene and the briny sea sequence from Bedknobs and Broomsticks are still in the works. Now that the submarines cater to screaming groupy teenagers, there will be no problems concerning elderly guests in wheelchairs and those steep spiral staircases. Besides, there is now a complete underwater city walkthrough. The concept of underwater cities has been around for over a hundred years. Books have been written, movies have been made, and now in a world of overpopulation and advanced technology, an underwater city in Tomorrowland will bring this area back to offering real exhibits of the future that it has promised the public for the past 60 years. Rumors are, this is a testing location for a bridge to the city. There are also rumors it is being tested as a projection screen for nighttime viewing of the popular bands in case the submarine line gets too long. If you ask the cast members about the future project and the construction going on, they will simply give the generic answer of I don't know, which they are paid to give until it is made official. Although one submarine driver was heard muttering under his breath, there's no way I'm going to sing along to a boy band. The still unnamed underwater city will be accessed from the walkway by the Matterhorn, over the submarines and across the large currently unused center of the lagoon. Inside the city will be rooms presenting a submerged house of the future a karaoke room where you can sing along with your favorite bands and potentially a meet and greet area. There are also future plans for a radio station. This will also be the first time in 60 years guests can look out underwater windows and see the submarine slowly cruising by. So back to the aquarium. Not only will the submarines float through it, guests will be able to walk through the large undersea garden as it is currently being called. Since the city is underwater, this is where they can sit and relax in comfortable sofas and watch the sea life grow and swim peacefully all around them. This is in direct response to the aquarium built at Legoland, and 
may soon be the most relaxing spot in all of the Anaheim Resort. The next room after the aquarium will be the kitchen of the future, where the fish are caught, skinned, carved up, fried to your liking, and served in the dining room of the future. Along with getting environmental with the trees, Disney is trying to show the public how peaceful and relaxing growing your own fresh food can be. They are already getting into hot water though with potential corporate sponsor General Electric, the original sponsor of the Carousel of Progress. They are claiming you can't show off their refrigerators or freezers if you serve food fresh. However, another returning corporate sponsor, Chicken of the Sea, has the upper hand in this battle and is ready to return, since they were in the park on day one. Other plans on the drawing boards are a walkthrough of the new species of trees, and maybe the monorail and steam trains will whirl through the underwater city, or even a new version of the People Mover. You might even be able to buy one of the new trees. The marketing department is already targeting pool owners looking for new ways to shade them. Now you can say you saw it here first, well before the official announcement comes out. Now, feel free to visit this location as many times as you want. But please, before you start asking them about the movie tie-in called Underwater High School Musical, I encourage you not to ask the business in question about the rockin' subs at the underwater city. The company is a very busy place, and can only tell you the same thing I am going to say to you right here, right now. This is entirely a work of fiction. Thank you so much for viewing. To keep Mouse Future presenting videos of the theme park industry, I will need your help. If you enjoyed this video, click like. If you thought this was possibly the worst video you have ever seen, click like. Click that share button for others who may be interested. Check out my other videos and playlists that are posted here. And click that subscribe button. More videos are on the way. Thank you so much, and I will see you again soon.